The Monster Mo2 M4 with supersized specs. Is it enough to stop out the competition and rule them all? The Solid State Logic SSL2. Can this legendary name live up to its reputation and assert its dominance? Who will win this epic battle? Find out today on Jacob Dark Sea. Enter the Solid State Logic SSL2. What's so special about it? Solid State Logic has been around for decades, making some of the biggest and baddest console boards in the industry. This being their first entry level interface is a pretty big deal for those who want the SSL name in their studio. So let's take a look. On the top side of the interface, you'll find the channel one and two sections with 48 volt phantom power, line and instrument switches. Below that is a color meter to monitor input levels, a gain knob, and a legacy 4K button. All of the knobs in this unit are the same knobs you'd find on a console board and feel really great to turn. The legacy 4K button is where this unit shines. Clicking this button turns on the legacy mode, which adds the SSL 4000 console flavor, giving the signal a high frequency EQ boost and harmonic distortion that sounds very, very musical. In the middle, we find a big blue monitor level knob, followed by a headphone volume knob and a monitor mix knob above. On the rear panel, you'll find the headphone input, two monitor outputs, and the mic line instrument inputs. It comes bundled with SSL Vocal Strip 2, Drum Strip, Pro Tools First, Ableton Live Lite, Complete Start, and Hybrid Keys, as well as 1.5 gigabytes of samples from Loop Cloud, all for $230. The Mo2 M4. Let's talk about the front. From left to right, it features two mic pre-line instrument inserts with 48 volt phantom power and mono buttons, an input playback knob for low latency input monitoring, and a switch to monitor inputs 3 and 4. Then a nice LCD color screen which shows your input and output meters, and a headphone jack. Those LCD meters are the highlight and I can't think of a single interface in this range that features both input and output meters of this caliber. On the back we have a power switch, MIDI in and out, RCA as well as quarter inch monitor outs and line outs, and two line inputs. A nice feature with this interface is loopback which allows you to record your input signal while recording from your computer's output as well. Bundled with the M4 is Mo2 Performer Lite, Ableton Live 10 Lite, and 6GB of loops and samples, all for $220. So how do they compare? To start off, the Mo2 features ESS Sabre 32 Ultra DAC with 120 dB dynamic range, giving round trip latency as low as 2.5 milliseconds at 24 bit 96K with a 32 sample buffer. What that means is if you're someone who wants a super stable ecosystem that can run tons of plugins and virtual instruments versus the SSL, the M4 is going to give you the edge. Winner, Mo2. It really does come down to personal preference here. The Mo2 has really nice input and output meters on the front, which knock it out the park versus other interfaces in the price range. On the downside, I'm not really a fan of the design as it reminds me of the old M audio boxes. The headphone knob on this unit feels like it's grinding on the inside when I turn it, and it seems to be a fingerprint magnet which gets noticeable pretty quickly. On the other hand, the SSL design is perfect for a desktop, has nice out pots like those used on mixing boards, a big knob in the middle, and has a legacy 4K button, which I'm glad is an actual button and not in the software. So again, personal preference, but in this case, for me, winner SSL. 
I use a Mackie big knob so that I can connect two sets of monitors. So setting the big knob to 12 o'clock and each interface to three, I ran two volume tests to see which interface has more of an audible output. Both interfaces have the monitor mix set to halfway. So let's see how they sound. Before we get into the video, be sure to visit my website, jacobdark.com. You can view my photography portfolio. Before we get into the video, be sure to visit my website, jacobdark.com. You can view my photography portfolio. Motu is the clear winner here. Now let's see what happens when we take the big knob out of the equation and just connect a set of monitors directly to each interface. We'll turn both dials to nine o'clock with both monitor mixes turned fully to playback. I know using the camera's microphone isn't the most scientific method, and the specs would indicate the Mo2 has the better dynamic range, but to my ears, I actually prefer the SSL2. I gotta go with what I hear, winner SSL2. And finally, a mic test. I ran a quick mic preamp test using a Mojave MA200 microphone connected directly to each interface with zero processing. The first is the SSL2 with no legacy 4K, then with legacy 4K, and finally the Motu M4. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to my channel. Instead of telling you which I prefer, I'd like to know, did you hear a difference? If so, which one did you prefer? So which would I recommend? It was going to be the Motu M4, though specs are the way to go and set a new standard for interfaces in this price range, but during the editing of this video, the M4 began having dropouts and crashing on me, freezing up the screen and my workflow. Reconnecting solved the issue each time, but until they get this worked out, I just can't recommend it without the stability the specs should offer. So congratulations SSL2. Specs aren't everything, and that legacy 4K button when combined with my Great River preamp produced something really special. It's finally convinced me to move on from my Tascam UH-7000 and usher in a new era of solid state logic glory.